This is a call for an uprising. Welcome to today's show. Oh, man. I stand corrected. I thought things couldn't get more insane. I thought maybe we had seen the peak of the insanity as far as the power that we were giving our government and giving the police over refusing the social distance and refusing to wear masks out. Well, get a load of what they're doing in Los Angeles and soon to be coming to a city, a town, a suburb near you. Tonight, the city of L.A. says enough's enough. Throw a big party like this one on Monday and pay the price. These large house parties have essentially become nightclubs in the hills. We will not take action lightly and we will act carefully, but we will act and do whatever it takes to save lives and keep people safe. According to the mayor, beginning Friday night, if police get a report of a large party, the city will have the authority to shut off water and power services to residents within 48 hours. It will focus on repeat offenders. This enforcement is not focused on small and ordinary gatherings in people's homes. These are focused on the people determined to break the rules. We're not asking people to make sacrifices just for the sake of making sacrifices. The data is crystal clear. If you have a lot of transmission, and people are getting together at parties, it is almost impossible at this point in time for there not to be transmission of this virus. Tonight, residents who make up the Hollywood United Neighborhood Council are applauding the city's action. They say they've seen a jump in house parties being hosted in the hills since the start of the pandemic. And then at that point, the owners of the property will really get the message that this is a problem that they have to, um, you know, deal with straight on. And if these large gatherings continue, it will be harder for us to get back to opening our schools and businesses. We all want to get out, obviously, but we really need to think of other people. That's why the numbers are going up. There's no way to get them to come down if people are going out and doing this. Oh, because I want to go party. You know, suck it up, buttercup. There is already a party house ordinance that was passed back in 2018 that imposes thousands of dollars in fines. But residents tell me that homeowners have been able to pay those fines off quickly. So they're really hoping this move by the city will help shut these parties down. You have got to literally be kidding me that they are now going to have the power as, as of Friday of this week, so tomorrow, or today, depending on when you watch it. This is today. They now have the power to shut off your power and water if you're hosting large gathering parties at your home. Now, there's been reports out there that people are still having weddings and things like that, but are following the social distancing guidelines where they're having chairs six feet apart. No one's dancing close. They're dancing distance. There's no slow dance. As ridiculous as it all sounds, some weddings, they're wearing the masks, which we've seen, and they've had them broken up by the police despite following the guidelines. Even though Dr. Fauci can go throw out a first pitch at a baseball game, he can knuckle it up with the players. He can sit in the stands directly next to people with his mask off, touching them and being near them. Like a hypocrite, the rest of us sit here and we allow it to happen. So we're giving them now the power, not only to turn off the power, but water as well you know water our life force because it's so scary what's going on out there that we need to threaten people by doing this because people refuse to take part in the shenanigans the order targets repeat offenders that have hosted large gatherings several times during the pandemic it's meant to deter them from hosting parties or events in the future during a period of the pandemic when California continues to lead the country in cases. And here's the number, which is laughable. Over 530,000 people in California have been diagnosed with the outbreak, with the virus. Over 9,800 of them have passed, according to CNN's U.S. case tracker. Nearly 40% of those cases have been reported in and around Los Angeles County, the county's public health department reported. And could this party have looked more staged? Like, what did they do? Did they put this on Craigslist too? Or was this, was this funded by BLM? Where everybody's there partying it up outside, right? And a helicopter flies by. I mean, give me a break. 
Well, they needed to show the people some type of footage to make them mad. And so they could show them some type of footage to say, look, this is why we now have to put the power in our hands to pull the plug on your electricity. And, you know, and this is going on around the country right now. You know, we saw this tropical storm, not a hurricane, hit the East Coast. And a lot of states in the East Coast have been without power for days, days. And remember, I reported on Plum Island many times over. If you're not familiar, Plum Island is where they used to have the Center for Disease Control. That's where they created ticks and Lyme. Or not, they didn't create ticks, but Lyme disease was created. They put viruses and these things inside of these air, you know, these bugs that could go and bite you and give you the, uh, you know, the disease. And that's where the word Lyme disease came in from because it went over to, uh, you know, the area closest to Plum Island. I believe the town was called Lyme or something along those, those lines. And suddenly we had Lyme disease in America. Now they've moved to Kansas, which what, what better place to put them than in the center of where they, uh, of all, where all the fields are, where they're, I mean, unbelievable, right? But anyway, they, what hap- is happening at Plum Island now is they're doing testing on pulling grids and power plugs and power supply. Last summer in New York, I'm sure most of you remember that big blackout that occurred in New York. Couldn't have been a connection to Plum Island, right? There have been rumors for years. And look, why, why should any of us be surprised that they wouldn't pull the plug and the grid on all of us at this point? Because they're doing whatever they want at this point because they're seeing no pushback from Americans. They're seeing Americans who are fluoridated, who are weak, who are pansies, who are completely just softer than a, I mean, I say softer than a cupcake. Uh, I mean, it's softer than diarrhea at this point. I mean, there's nothing, there's not even any substance to people anymore. They're so soft and weak. Why wouldn't they go, you know what, let's pull the plug on them. What do you think that the politicians and the celebrities have the plugs pulled? Well, they have, you know, underground bunkers and all this other crap that these people live in. What do you think they built them for 500 years from now or they built them for now? Right, from Tom Cruise all the way down, these celebrities who have these underground homes to what we see underneath DC with the underground cities, right, to the Ozarks. So what do you think? They, they wouldn't test pulling the plug? Because they're telling you right now that they're putting the power in the hands of the police to decide, well, if someone's having a party, and let's let's be real, repeat offender. Somebody could show up and just piss the cop off, and the cop could go, eh, okay. Or they could just do it in general. Anyone who's having a party, they don't even need to have a confrontation. They just hear a party going on and they go, all right, we're going to pull the plug. We don't even need to go to the front door and confront them about shutting it down. We'll pull the plug and we'll pull the water. And yes, I get it. They could have generators and things like that. But they had to film, obviously, the party going on so that they can use it as a way of showing people how bad we're being as citizens. Look at these bad people having a party and this is why we have to pull the plug. And people go, oh, man, if everyone would just behave, this would all go away. Idiots. There's nothing to leave. There's nothing going on. They're taking your rights away. And they're testing their boundaries. And we're giving them everything they want. So starting Friday, if the police department in L.A. responds and confirms that a large gathering is taking place at a property, they'll give notice and request that the city's Department of Water and Power shuts off service to the property within the next two days. Now, how is that legal? What if somebody at that house dies five days later because they didn't have any water to drink? What if they pull the plug on an entire apartment building or an entire complex where other people aren't even doing anything and they pull it anyway? Water? We're letting them pull water from us? How much power are we going to give these? Ugh, I can't even say. Every word's so offensive now. So. so this enforcement is not focused on small and ordinary gatherings in people's homes. Yeah, okay. They're focused on the people determined to break the rules. That's, that's their determination. Who's to say what's large and what's small? This party doesn't look so huge to me. People have, There's plenty of space where people are walking around. It doesn't look like one of those parties you see in Las Vegas, you know, inside the pool where it's a huge sausage party and nobody can move. They're like butting, their butts are touching one another. It actually even looks like some of them are social distancing. Sure, there's some people right next to each other in the picture, but I mean, for the most part, it doesn't look like the worst thing that I've ever seen as far as you're telling me these huge parties are going on. And like I said, they just pulled the plug in a wedding and they were completely following the rules. They even had security there to make sure people were doing it because they didn't want their wedding interrupted. And why would they? But who comes? Big Brother comes in and says no. And we go, oh, shucks. So they say it's not focused on small and ordinary gatherings in people's homes. 
But we've already heard all these stories about people who've had small gatherings at their homes in all the states around the country and had the gatherings broken up. Whether it's real or fake stories or not, how many have we heard? You've heard it in your town. I guarantee you've heard some story on the local news in a town next door, you know, oh, so-and-so threw a party and the police had to go break it up. People aren't following the distancing rules. They're not following the rules, right? Another way to divide us, another way to take our rights away. Let's say, go oh, partying has become a big problem in LA where cases are just surging and surging and surging. Monday, a mansion party with an, over 100 guests. That's a lot of people, 100 guests, 100 people. How about some of these How about some of these places like CNN functioning? You don't think there's 100 people in the building working? No? How about in the White House? So these are, oh, there's not 100 people there. I said, but, and of course, they had to tie in a, you know, an event involving, a, well, you know what? To get your Second Amendment rights, of course, because it wouldn't make sense for them to do it and waste the opportunity to say, oh, by the way, there was one of these things that happened again. We better, you better get rid of the Second Amendment. You know, it's a dangerous world. This is us giving everything away. That's all we've done already. And they're continuing to, to see how far they could push the boundaries to the point where they take every single right that we have away. And when you're telling me that we're going to allow our government not even our government, our government giving the power to the Masonic police force to pull your power and your water supply. People don't have a problem with that. What point are we going to rise up and fight back against this? This is getting absurd. Oh, but they weren't distancing and they didn't have masks. And the statistics show that 530,000 cases have been reported. And we know it's all bogus and 9,000 people have passed. Uh, pretty minimal statistics, if you ask me. They used to report higher stats on the flu. <laughs> Boy, more people dying, you know, drink, you know, texting and driving and things like that every day. More kids getting going missing every day. The 9,000 in a seven-month period passing from uh, some outbreak. The same amount of kids get abducted every day and get born into covens and then traded. and tra It's just unbelievable the, the, how they've gotten everyone focused into buying into this stuff. And now we're going to let them take our power and our water away. What's, what's left? Should we just let them, should we just let them stick, uh, you know, take our blood out of our bodies? Should we let them come bobatize us next? It's getting ridiculous. I want to thank everyone out there for listening to today's show. Hopefully they keep this video up. Check out my website at callforanuprising.com. It's $2.99 a month. My content over there is not censored, so you don't have to worry about videos going missing. And, of course, you could share your information, your videos, and anything going on in your town with me and other like-minded people. We're all interested in interacting and communicating with each other and staying in touch and not having to worry about censorship. So check it out if you haven't. And I want to thank the patrons and all of you again for supporting the channel. Unbelievable. Can you believe this stuff? They're pulling. All right, Shalom Makim. First and foremost, I'm giving all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakab Kudash, and double honors to the apostles and the elders, the great millstone that we will and teach well, and sincere salutations to all the Akim out there pushing this truth and sincerity to wake up the whole food elect. Shalom. All right, so as you see, man, again, you know, I did a video, you know, covering these scriptures, but hey, it. it it's, it's 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 of the truth man it's of the uttermost truth all right you know you got esau all right that's coming with them harsh laws man them unrighteous decrees all right and that's because we are in these times where all right esau eat them all right you know i this a hey, my favorite scripture man why because it's coming to pass and plus a hey, it's prof it's prophetic man where esau come down having great wrath all right but also all right, you know, that lamb, all right, that spake as a dragon. You know, I brought these three scriptures out, all right, not, uh, you know, in my last video. All right, but, hey, if it sounds like a broken record, all right, go ahead and watch another video. All right, but, you know, I'm just through the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai for allowing me to uh, even do this lesson. All right. So this is Isaiah. 10 and 1. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees and that right grievousness which they have prescribed. All right, so these both are cutting off water 
and power if you're throwing a party, man. Unrighteous decrees and grievousness, man. All right, because like the, uh, you know, like the dude said in the video, all right, you might have somebody who's going to go without water and end up dead after those days that you decide to finally shut the water back on. And y'all giving power, all right, unto these officers to do that, man, to city officials. All right, and like he said, there might not even be, there might be a small gathering. You will have a Karen, all right, that look out that window and see that and report it to the police, man. All right, and that's going, and, that, and these are the times that we coming into. All right, and that's why we have to be ready, all right, and to get ready in the spirit, man. All right, because soon it's not, it's going to, it's going to be to where if you don't have that chip, all right, you're not going to have a home, or they're going to cut off your power or your lights. All right, and this is just, man, this is just showing you the wickedness of Esau. All right, he don't care for nobody but himself, man, and barely himself. All right. So I'm going to get this last scripture. All right. Revelation 13 and 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. All right, and that's talking about Esau Edom, man, and his political system. All right. All right. Because when he speak as a lamb, man, you know, he come out humbly. All right. Crouches himself. Humbleth himself. All right. But when he speak, man, he comes with them harsh laws. Just like you see in this video. All right. Because in New York, they already saying they setting up checkpoints, man. And you got to pay all right, a certain amount of money. All right. If you don't follow them exact laws. All right, not just as well. He's taking away all right, the uh, Constitution, which really doesn't apply to you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, all right, who are the true Hebrew Israelites. All right, those constitutional rights was made just for Esau and his people so they can get away with their wickedness. All right, but this is, but this is Esau, man. All right. He, he destroys everything, man. He's the son of perdition. All right, he's unprofitable, man. And Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, all right, is going to take him out and set up one that is profitable, being Yahweh Shai. All right, and after Yahweh Shai, all right, the 144, the 12 apostles, after the 12 apostles, the 144 elect, and on down. All right, but you know, this was just a quick update, all right. Abarath Zai was edifying again, giving all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakaha Kodash, and double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well and teach well, and sincere salutations to all the Akim out there pushing his truth in sincerity to wake up the hopefully elect. Shalom.